Rebecca with the Nocturnal. How are you? Good, good. How are you? Good to see you. I mean, you know, today's a beautiful day and I love the movie. So we're starting off the day right. <laughs> That's a good start. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about your character, Tate. Um, Tate grows up in the same town as Kaya. Um, and he's one of the only friends that she has growing up. And when the rest of her family abandons her, they kind of develop this um, this relationship over their shared love of the marsh and, um, and nature and kind of discover that they have something extra underneath that, which is like a shared love for, for one another. And uh, he's with her by her side as she goes through uh, her, her survival story when the town turns on her when she's accusing of murder. One thing I loved about the film is how it incorporates a lot of things that I love, like romance, murder mystery, drama, and it encompasses it all. Yeah. And I just loved how the story progressed throughout. Like you see the different ages and how everything developed with each character. And I just loved how it transitioned. It's, yeah, they did it really wonderfully. Um, I also like the flashbacks where it, it lets you kind of sit with the, the characters um, over some time, you start to develop a relationship with each one individually, um, and you start to make uh, assumptions and, and decisions about who did it uh, as it as it goes along. So you're, you're not really sure until the very end. And speaking of decisions, I feel like there were moments during the film where your character had to choose between his head or his heart. Yeah. So when when your decisions, which do you feel is best to follow? obviously nobody's perfect, right? And, and Tate's a prime example of that. He's, you know, the good guy, quote unquote, in this book and in the, in the movie. Um, but no, nobody's perfect. He's not cookie cutter. There was a time when he should have come back on 4th of July to um, be there for Kaya. And when he is now put in the same category as everybody else who left her and abandoned her, she's, she's truly on her own. And finally, when he comes back, he realizes how you know big of a mistake that he made. He, he should have listened to his heart. His head was telling him he needed you know, to go out into the world and, and, and not exist in the marsh with Kaya forever. Um, but as soon as he left, his heart told him otherwise. And he, um, I think he spends the rest of his life trying to make up for that with her. So listen to your heart, but, you know, yeah, not always. <laughs> <laughs> you got to balance it. You got to balance, balance it. Yeah. <laughs> So seeing how Kaya and Tate's love story developed, it was so genuine and heartfelt. So can you describe what it was like working with Daisy and how were you guys able to maintain that on-screen chemistry? First of all, it's Daisy Edgar Jones. I mean, she's just absolutely wonderful. Um, getting to just meet her, quote unquote, for the first time over Zoom when we had the chemistry, it's, there was like a, she just has like a, a crazy energy. You just want to be around it. Like, I can't wait to meet this person. Um, I was hoping and, and praying after the chemistry that I would get to work with her. And thankfully I did. And when I got to meet her for the first time, you know, she ran over to me and like jumped on me, gave me a big hug. And we just became like best friends since. Um, there wasn't any work that needed to be done, which is such a blessing because sometimes you do have to like orchestrate that or, or create it with her. It was just like a, it felt like a friend I had known forever. Um, they were reunited again for the first time. So um, she's just wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, I could definitely feel it in the movie. I was like, this is too cute. I love <laughs> this. And one of the scenes that really stuck with me, even after I was finished watching the film, was when Kaya was in the jail cell and she was given a book and it was about, you know, animals and shells. And she ends up saying, people often forget about the animals in the shells. So mm -hmm. for you, were there any moments or scenes that really stuck with you even after production wrapped up? I think one of the scenes that stuck with me after we finished filming was probably, um, uh, Probably the scene where I'm telling her a little bit about my my backstory and Tate's, you know, losing his mom and his little sister in a car crash um, over in Asheville. I think that was a really beautiful moment where he kind of got to tell her, hey, you're not alone. You know, um, you know, I, I've been through something similar to uh, we can both be broken together. I just thought that was really beautiful. The scene and getting to um, share that with Daisy was, was also beautiful as well. So when I look back on the products, I think of that. And when watching the film, I was I was just following all the different things that, you know, Kaya or Tate was even talking about, about loneliness, finding your person, you know, trying to be yourself in a town full of judgment. Mm -hmm. So for you, what were some things that you really loved about, you know, being a part of this project? 
first of all, the, the community of people, um, filmmaking is not like a solo sport by any means. Uh, it's, it's definitely a team sport. So just having that community every day. Um, and we're all trying to solve the same problem, you know, so just getting to be a part of something bigger and, uh, trying to make the same movie is, um, I don't know. It's, it's something really special that I haven't found anywhere else. And how did it feel being a part of a film that was, ba- that is based on a novel? So cool. You know, it's cool because you have like the the reference book. It's like the you have the Bible with you, you know, for this specific film. And um, you read it like four or five, six, seven, eight times. You bring it with you on set and you just en- engross yourself in it. And um, it's it's really, really nice to have a, a piece of source material, especially as wonderful as, as you know, Delia's book because her writing is just incredible. Like it's cinematic by nature and, and getting to you know, dive into your character's thoughts and what they might have been going through at that time. The answer is right in the book. You don't have to really look far or come up with it on your own. So it's it's wonderful. And I was telling my friends that I was gonna I was gonna watch the film. They were like, I read the book and you are like to see it on screen is completely different from when you read it in the book because like now you get that visual. You get to yeah. see the emotions. It's it's really, really nice to have it come you know full circle. And um I think it's such a loyal adaptation to the book that when people want and, and go see it and, you know, order it uh, online, they're going to they're, they're gonna be very proud and, and happy with how it turned out. And thank you so much for speaking with me today. Of course. Nice to meet you. Of course. Bye. Bye.